See that? The wheel is all the way up into the shroud. All right. See that? There's our problem. That's just awesome. My question is, was it damage? Or was it just piss poor construction? Okay, I was able to straighten this for the time being, but based on the way things are looking, I'm going to get it running. No, I'm not going to get it running. Or maybe I am. Anyway, my point is to try to get this system functional so I can complete the work I've got left here before I have to go get a, another wheel, another housing, another belly band. I've got a generic belly band, but I'd like to go back with factory parts. I know somebody's going to tell me that that's retarded. Just put a belly band on it and go. But I'm hoping I can just get this running right now. makes me think of problems you're supposed to have with, you know, Goodman equipment, not train. Of course, there may have been installer damage. Maybe they had to disassemble the unit when they were trying to get it through the attic access. But still. That's pretty crappy. So we're going to set this up the way it was. It was red to black and yellow to red. Now we can make it start the system. <laughs> no, not yet. Steve, watch your P's and Q's. You might want to put screws in that door. Maybe. Maybe. I feel like I'm missing a short length screw. I thought there were four short screws that came out of this. We do have four screws left, so I guess maybe they were two longs and two shorts. Anyway, blower secured. Set up some thermostats. We're going to go to T stat type. One is heat pump. Two is heat pump. One is heat pump. Two is heat pump. Okay. High temperature limit is 120. Low temperature limit is 48. We got heat pump there. OB, normal. Fan is electric. Number five is electric. Okay. We're good on the dip switches. Now we set up some thermostats. 
It is 8.44 a.m. It is Tuesday, and we've got a heat pump, reversing valve, normal, cycles per hour, 9, compressor cycles, automatic changeover, why not, 15 compressor delay, we're going to drop down to 0 for testing, and done. We're going to go ahead and turn that off while we go play with the one downstairs. Now we're going to give a call for emergency heat on both thermostats and um, get a temperature split as well as static pressure. Put it on a hold, crank it to 90. Go to 90. Do as I say. Okay, so we've got both zones calling. We've got proof of it through the lights on the zone dampers over there. We got lights on the zone board. Thermostats are turned on. We've got auxiliary heat pulling 31.6 amps. We've got a uh, temperature split. I just got zone for zone 2 open. So we're just now getting some hot air over there. Um, trying to get my bypass damper set up for both zones open and fill in my i-manifold startup data so working on that I'm probably not going to bore you with the whole process I'll just give you an overview once we get static and everything set up but that's where we're at now starting off though We've got 0.23 static on the return, and we're getting supply static here in just a minute. We've got a supply static of 0.15. That gives us a total static, like an idiot, I just cleared it. That gives us a total static of 0.3. 8.35 in that range. That is with our bypass closed and both zones open. So now we're going to get amps and volts just for the I manifold report to give it get an idea of what kind of a temperature split we're looking at and that sort of thing. We've got amperage on the auxiliary heat at 31.6 voltage at 235.8 that gives us wattage of 74 point or 7451 that calculates to 885 CFM by the temperature me split method of airflow calculation. Um, I don't have the blower data on this air handler. Don't have any paperwork. So we know the static is low and we're probably moving air pretty decent. But anyway, we're going to submit that to user inputs. And then we're going to start playing with the dampers. Okay. So, we're going to take zone 2 thermostat and close that. Our other zone damper is not completely... There it is. Our zone 2 damper is completely closed, so now we're running on one zone, and we've got a total overall static right now of half an inch. We're going to be flirting with 0.51 down to 0.44. So not too bad. 
we're actually, I'm actually happy with that, as far as static is concerned. Not too bad at all. So next we're going to get that zone to come back on. And we're going to close zone one. Should be getting indicator lights here shortly. We've got zone two wide open, and zone one is closing. Zone one is closed, zone two is wide open. Once again, we're flirting with half an inch. I'm satisfied with that for sure. Very satisfied there. So I guess the moment of truth comes now where we go check on our vacuum. Well, with the vacuum running, we were down at about 15.50. We valved it off, and it's been sitting for several minutes. And we rose to 1,609 microns. So we definitely have a leak. And despite my 10 minutes of pressure test, we've got a leak somewhere. I'm going to make a judgment call and go ahead and release the charge and get the system running and put a note in to come back and leak search it um, once we've got some refrigerant in there to help locate the leak hopefully rather than try to find a leak just on a pressure test. Maybe not the best way to do it, but that's what my decision is at this point. So we got the Schrader core removers valved off. We're going to crack this open, give us some positive pressure. doesn't want to break loose. I'm going to go ahead and get the Schrader back in there. Yeah. Going to need the Allen key for that one. We're not getting enough of a seat to open that valve up. So I can go ahead and move back to my quick service tool. set up to run the unit. We're going to go ahead and set up user inputs. We got a nominal two and a half ton. Power factor of 0.95. We've got amps, 1.5, and 1.6. We've got volts to ground.
119.4, All right, that'll give us our watts usage of the air handler. Now we go back outside to adjust the charge. Alright, so we've got an estimated 40 feet of refrigerant pipe. We're going to give it a pound of refrigerant. And we're definitely going to need to get it running for that, so we'll throw the disconnect. And we're just going to start by easing in a pound, since we do have an estimated line length. So we've got a outdoor ambient of about 24, we can call it 25, and a return air of 46. That really doesn't even come into our chart as an option. 25, the lowest. indoor performance is 60 degrees. So we're going to simply have this unit charged for the estimated line length and a little run time here. So we've got a temperature split of 15 degrees we are operating at one and a quarter tons, 14, almost 15,000 BTUs, subcooling at 24, superheat at 22. Based on the manufacturer's data, I would actually, you know, say that this is probably pretty close to the indoor temperature and outdoor conditions. It was actually below that curve to where I would kind of extrapolate maybe Maybe I'm way off, but estimated line length is the best I can do until the system brings the house up to normal. I'd say we're pretty much where we're going to be at this point. And we're going to move on to the next one. We'll go ahead and send our report. Take a snapshot. Save and send. Report sent. All right, on to the next one, which is right over there. One last note on this zoned system. Once I brought in the auxiliary heat, we've got almost a 40 degree temperature rise. 38. So it should warm up pretty nicely once we've got that auxiliary heat kicking in.